Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's move ahead with question number 34. Consider the circuit shown in the figure. Find the current through the 10 ohm resistor when the switch S is open and closed. So first let us look at the scenario when the switch is open. Now when the switch is open, what would happen? This circuit is not complete. So as a result, there would be no current flowing through this part because it is broken, the, the circuit is broken. So in that case, what would happen? How much current will flow through the 10 ohm resistor? So well, the, the flow of current in this case would be somewhat like this. Let's say that if current I flows in this fashion, so this I would, would come till here, but the moment it reaches this point, no current will flow along this part. So what will happen? The entire current will flow like this and it will come back here. So basically there will be no flow of current along this path. Okay. So in this case, the current flowing through the conductor would be V by R. So what is the value of V for the circuit? 3, for three volts and R. So this current will pass through these two resistors, 10 ohms and 20 ohms. So therefore resistance, net resistance would be 10 plus 20. So this is 3 by 30 which is equal to 0 0.1 ampere. So this would be the amount of current that flows through 10 ohm resistor when the switch is open. Now let us look at the second scenario when the switch is closed. Now the moment the switch is closed, what will happen? Current will also flow through the circuit, right? Because the moment the switch is closed, current will also flow through this circuit. In fact, it, now what will happen is most of the current will flow through this part. Why? Because now once the current reaches this point, it has two options. Either it can go straight or it can follow this path. Now if it goes straight, it has to face this resistor which will try to oppose the flow of current. But if it flows through this path, in that case there is no resistor. So which path will current prefer? So current will prefer obviously this path. Right? So most of the current will now flow through this path the moment the switch is closed. And as a result, there will be no current flowing through the 20 ohm resistor. So the 20 ohm resistor basically will have no role to play now. So now if you ask the amount of current that will pass through the 10 ohm resistor, now in this case, in the second case, basically the situation is slightly different. So let us draw the circuit once again to show the situation in the second case. So now that the switch is closed, in this case, the current will flow like this. It will pass through the 10 ohm resistor and then it will pass through this path and it will come here. So no current will flow through the 20 ohm resistor. So in this case current will be equal to V by R where value of V will remain the same but R will only be 10 ohms because 20 ohms doesn't play any role this time. So this would be 0 0.3 amperes. So now more current will flow through the 10 ohm resistor. Question number 35. Figure shows a part of an electric circuit. The potentials at points A, B and C are 30 volts, 12 volts and 2 volts respectively. Find the currents through the three resistors. Okay. So the potentials at each of these points are given and we have to find out the current that is flowing through each of these resistors. Okay, so first let us try to understand what is happening in this problem. So basically, according to this problem, let, let us okay, let us mark this point as P. Now, as per the problem, the potential difference, potential difference between these two points would be equal to I into R, where I is the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor. Let's say I current flows through the 10 ohm resistor. So I into R would be equal to the potential difference between these two points A and P. So we can write VA minus VP will be equal to I into R, where I into R is 10 ohms. Right. So this is our first expression. Second expression is the potential difference between point P and point B will basically be the amount of current which is flowing through this resistor 20 ohms. Let's say I1 current is flowing through 20 ohms. So we can say that VP minus VB is equal to I1 into 20 ohms. This is equation 2. And finally third equation would be VP minus VC 
is equal to how much current will flow through this resistor I minus I1 because this I current came here at point P I1 went up so I minus I1 would go down so VP minus VC will be equal to I minus I1 into 30 ohms so this is equation 3 so now we have these three equations so we have to solve these three equations to find out the value of I and I1 Right, so that, that's the simple target that we have. So hereafter, we will just do the mathematical calculation part. So what we do, we add equation 1 and 2. So now when we add equations 1 and 2, what do we get? We get VA minus VB is equal to 10 into I plus 2 I1. Now the value of VA is given as 30 volts, VB is given as 12 volts. This is equal to 10 into I plus 2 I1. So 18 is equal to 10 into I plus 2 I1. Or we can say that 9 is equal to 5 I plus 10 I1. So this is our equation A. Let us name this as equation A. So see here after there is no complication involved. We are just doing simple mathematics. Yeah. So we have got this one equation. This, this is an equation in two variables I and I1. Okay. Now let's do one thing. So now we subtract equation 3 from equation 2. So what do we get? We get minus VB plus VC is equal to 20I1 minus 30I plus 30I1. Let us solve this. So we get VC minus VB is equal to 50I1 minus 30I. So let's put values of VC and VB which is 2 and 12 respectively. So this is equal to 50I1 minus 30I. Or we can say minus 10 is equal to 10 into 5i1 minus 3i. So this is minus 1 is equal to 5i1 minus 3i. Or we can say 3i minus 5i1 is equal to 1. And let us call this as equation B. So now we have equations A and B which are both equations in two variables i and i1 so let us try to solve these two equations so it is sim it is nothing but just solving lean equations in two variables okay so what we will do first of all we will multiply equation b with 2 so what do we get we get 3 into 2 6i minus 5 into 2 10i1 is equal to 1 into 2 which is 2 so this is what we get and let us call this as equation c so now what we do is we add equation A plus equation C. So we get, this is equation A, 5i plus 10i1 is equal to 9. And this is equation C, which is 6i minus 10i1 is equal to 2. So now when you add these two, 10i1, 10i1 gets cancelled. So you get 11i is equal to 11. Or i is equal to 11 by 11 that is 1 so i is equal to 1 ampere so we have been able to find out i now let us try to calculate i1 so i1 now you can find out i1 from any of these equations either a b or c so i1 would be equal to like for now i am finding it out from equation b so i1 would be equal to 1 minus 3 i divided by minus 5 so this is equal to 1 minus 3 into 1 divided by minus 5 which is equal to minus 2 by minus 5 that is 2 by 5 or 0 0.4 ampere. So I1 will be 0 0.4 ampere and therefore what will be the value of I minus y, I1 that would be 1 minus 0 0.4 that is 0 0.6 amperes. So the currents passing through the three resistances would be 1 ampere, 0 0.4 ampere and 0 0.6 amperes respectively. Question number 36. Find the current in the three resistors shown in the figure. So if you look at the arrangement in the figure, it is like a very symmetric kind of arrangement where you have uh, two uh, cells and one resistance. And the same uh, pattern gets repeated over and again. 
right so now here we will try to do this so here we will try to solve this question using kirchhoff's law and you know that that will make your uh, understanding of the kirchhoff's law also better and it will be a quick revision of kirchhoff's law as well okay so now here we can very distinctly see three circuits so let us name these three circuits 1 2 and 3 so we will start obviously with circuit 1 so in circuit 1 we will follow quickly the steps of kirchhoff's law first of all assume a direction okay even before that first uh, mark in the diagram the flow of current so let's say that if the current flows like this let's say current i flows in this fashion so where does it go the moment it reaches this point what happens some amount of current so till here i current is coming some amount of current goes here maybe i1 goes here so how much will come here i minus i1 right now here again i1 current is flowing so some amount of current will come here which is i2 so how much current will flow through this that would be i1 minus i2 right and that's how the entire pattern would be so let's talk about the first circuit so in the first circuit how many uh, cells do you have two so sum of the emfs before that let's assume a direction and let's say this is my assumed direction so in as per this assumed direction we the the assumed direction leaves the emf in its negative terminal so the emf would be negative minus 2 but we have one more emf and if you look at the other emf we see that it leaves the assumed direction leaves it in the positive terminal so this would be plus 2 so this will be equal to the product of the current and their respective resistances so which is the resistance in circuit 1 this 1 ohm how much current is flowing i minus i1 into 1 but what would be the uh, direction so in this case if you see this is the direction of current which is along the assumed direction so this would be positive right but here on this side you have minus 2 plus 2 which is 0 so 0 is equal to i minus i1 therefore we get i is equal to i1 so this is our first conclusion from the kirchhoff's equation of first circuit now let's move on to the circuit 2 so in circuit 2 what are the emfs that we have now again let's assume a direction let's say this is my direction so again it leaves one cell in the negative terminal and it leaves the other cell in the positive terminal so one would be negative and the other one would be positive and in this case which are the resistances involved there are two resistances first is this one ohm through which i minus i1 current is flowing and the other one is 1 ohm through which i1 minus i2 current is flowing so i1 minus i2 into 1 now let's look at their directions so if you look at this one the direction is opposite to that of the assumed direction so this would be minus now let's look at this one now this direction is along the direction of our assumed direction so this would be plus so in this case zero is equal to now i minus i1 is equal to zero that's what we obtained here so this entire thing is also zero plus i1 minus i2 so therefore here we uh, we get that i1 is equal to i2 so that is our second observation from the second circuit okay now let's move ahead to the third circuit and what's happening in the third circuit so in the third circuit again you have two cells let's assume this direction so this leaves one cell in the negative terminal other cell in the positive terminal so you will have minus 2 plus 2 this would be equal to what are the resistances so one resistance is 1 ohm through which i1 minus i2 current flows that is i1 minus i2 into 1 the other resistance is 1 ohm through which i2 current flows that is i2 into 1 right let's look at their uh, directions so i2 current flows along the direction of our assumed direction so this would be plus however the direction of this current is opposite to the assumed direction so this would be minus now here again this is zero i1 minus i2 is also equal to zero as we obtained in circuit 2 so this would be zero plus i2 so we see that i2 is equal to zero now since i2 is equal to zero what will be the value of i1 that would also be zero now since i1 is equal to i what would be the value of i that would also be equal to zero so basically the current in all the three resistors would be zero 
This was an interesting question, isn't it? So even though no current is flowing through the circuits, we just proved it using the Kirchhoff's laws. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.